Well, I'm going to give what I'm afraid is fated to be an annual speech about why I'm voting against the budget. Um, and it's not because I actually disagree with most of it. I, in fact, agree with probably more than 95% of it. Um, but it's missing a crucial element um, this year as in last, which is board involvement. Um, either at the beginning or now at the end. Um, because we are supposed to actually act and react to public comment. Um, and when is the time? That is the question. I agree that the law requires us, because I've read it a lot this year with the maintenance of effort, the law requires us to adopt a maintenance of effort budget. Um, we knew when we adopted that budget that uh, we were going to probably end up getting cut by the county council. And it made a lot of sense before the county council acted to sit tight and remain quiet and not really talk about potential cuts or priorities. We had the superintendent's recommended list before us, but in terms of really addressing that, um, it was difficult to do that before the county council acted and before we got our maintenance of effort waiver from the state because we were still very uncertain until we got that waiver about what kind of money we're talking about. So now, just in the last few weeks, we actually know. And now we actually have more information on the exact allocation of the cuts that are recommended and the exact allocation of the positions. And yet, once again, we find ourselves in a position where I think the majority of the board feels constrained not to change anything, um, which leaves us in the uncomfortable and unfortunately true position of the fact that until we vote on this budget, and I understand it will be adopted, in terms of behind the scenes input or discussion at the table, I do not believe that a single board member has actually affected this budget. Not with regard to a single position. I know I haven't. Uh, I had a parent come up this weekend and say, thank you for saving the magnet transportation. And I think she was getting that from a quote that was in a newspaper where I said I was really glad that we didn't have the magnet transportation go away. Um, but I had to clarify with her that I had nothing to do with that. Um, I really had zero input. Um, and so the question I have with regard to, for example, the VAC, is I've had multiple discussions with my some of my colleagues on, on couldn't we do something else? How can we get the money for it? What are the priorities? And I believe that if we were starting from the get-go and we were to say, could we cut more into the consultant budget and fund the VAC, that there would probably be agreement on that priority. But because we are here at this point in time, when there are a thousand reasons why you can't change the category, and if you had to, you know, go raise extracurricular fees, then, you know, you'd have to go to the county council and get it appropriated, and you, you can't do this and you can't do that, and there's a thousand reasons why you can't touch the budget. We're not going to touch the budget. If I thought I could get a second for restoring the VAC, I would, but I won't, can't. And so I raise the question once again with my colleagues, why are we here? If we have no input on the budget and we're not going to ever change it either before or after the county council acts, are we merely window dressing? Um, and I think the process matters and I think that Unless the process has changed, I really don't, you know, once we vote and the budget is adopted at that point, yes, it will be our budget, but it will not be because the board did anything. Um, looking forward to next year, it's going to be an equally tough or actually tougher budget. Um, we're probably not going to get bailed out by the federal government again. Um, tax revenues are going to remain down. We cannot continually kick OPED down the road. 
at some point that's going to be unsustainable. Note that the Baltimore City firefighters just sued the city for failing to adequately fund retirement benefits. I would hate to end up in that same position, but we do need to have that discussion about what is a sustainable benefit, and that is probably going to get into health benefits. We may end up next year really actually having to discuss furloughs because we may be in a position where it's furloughs or even deeper cuts into programs. And when we make these cuts to the programs, and you slice, and you slice, and you slice, at some point that does equal a policy direction, whether it's regard, with regard to um, visual arts for highly gifted visual artists um, or any other program. But we never have had that discussion about direction. And so once again, I, I'm going to cast a lonely vote um, and urge my colleagues to rethink um, what is our role and how do we perform it? Thanks. Thank you.